did like a master class and then I watched a few things about essential oils and if people wanted me to share that information that I found about them. So I was like, okay, well, I can share that and I'm open to sharing that. So we're going to get into today, in today's video, we're going to get into what are essential oils, the different uses of essential oils, how to use them, them as well. So essential oils are pretty much a distillation or an extraction of the plant compound within a carrier oil or within just the pure uh, extraction slash distillation. Typically, when making essential oils, you want to distill them. And upon making them, you can make blends to make a more powerful oil compound to use to treat whatever you want to treat or to use. Any type of holistic care, pretty much. Any form of holistic care that you need, whether that's calming, restoration, improving, balancing, harmonizing, you know, cultivating better moods, uh, and opening up things, releasing mucus. That's what the essential oils are typically used for. And when making blends, they are a little bit more powerful in that process. To understand how to make blends, they, you, you normally do a CCMS test. The chemical compounds of the particular plant and the oil that is being used and, and the exact amounts to use, pretty much. In order to understand how essential oils are used and which ones to use and which ones to blend, you have to understand the components. How you identify the components is by three arch archetypes. It is by the Latin name or by the name of the component. It is by the chemotypes and the chemical components. So the Latin name helps with identifying the genius and the species of the plant to make the oil. The chemotype designates the same and different species of the oils because as well you can have the same type of species of one plant. So that means you will have, in a sense, like sometimes they're not just because they're the same, even though they're the same category, like lavender, which has like 45 different lavenders, but the most common use of lavender is lavender or spike lavender. But there's so many different types of lavender or, or same plant, but it can have different species. Chemical components provides the characteristics of the oil, which is going to tell you what the oil does pretty much. So like knowing that, okay, if I get lavender, lavender is calming. Why is lavender common? And the chemical components will tell you what makes lavender to be uh, uh, common. So now moving on to our next section is the different types and what to use slash how to use. And I will source my information uh, in my link. So using some uh, essential oils is a very much ancient medicinal practice that is used to treat inflammation. When it comes to inflammation, anything with the suffix itis and low key any disease that we have is inflammation of something. It, we can result to having an inflammation of something, whether that's inflammation of the skin, inflammation of the lungs, inflammation of the mouth, the inflammation of the whatever. Anything can be inflammation. So when you have any type of ailment or any type of sickness, you want to decrease that inflammation. The inflammation of mucus. Inflammation is just like an increased amount, right? So, and chronic inflammation is where you create chronic uh, underlying immune diseases at that point. So where you then are diagnosed with having an autoimmune, only autoimmune disease, but it will be pain, stiffness, and aches as well. Aches of the body, aches of the muscles, aches of the, like, just aches. Something that's really good for treating inflammation is turmeric and frankincense. 
we know turmeric to be very well for especially inflammation of pain and of other little things we know turmeric to be used in ayurvedic medicine practices where they use it a lot in ayurvedic medicine medicinal practices and um india turmeric contains a compound called tumorone helps in producing stem cells and helps with supporting healthy nerve tissue and in, so that's why that would be helpful for the inflammation adhd or add or any type of brain function disease vivitor and cedarwood if the use of essential oils especially within uh aromatherapy it is helpful with producing nerve function as well so you can increase your nerve function a study has been shown that vivitor is actually the highest uh, thing used when it comes to natural medicine of essential oils to be used for um, treating ADD I mean ADHD Second is cedarwood, and then third is actually lavender because lavender is very calming. Uh, trouble with memory loss is rosemary. Essential oils are also, you know, they're great for children to be used because um, they allow drops, like, you know what I mean? They, they can be diffused. They're very gentle uh, as well. You want to use, if you're using it for children, you will use more gentle things like lavender or you would diffuse them in a diffuser or with the oil. Like you could still do all of these things, but we all know that uh, essential oils, like kids are a little bit more sensitive to a lot of things. So due to that factor of them being a little bit more sensitive, they actually, uh, you know, they have, they have, they react differently pretty much is what I'm trying to say. They react a little bit differently. So certain essential oils are a little bit powerful and other ones are on the gentler side like lavender or chamomile or other oils of such. This blend of vivitor and cedarwood can be used internally and can be taken, used topically as well. So external use and it can be taken for internal use. With me, I want to say when I say these essential oils is always do your research first. Always do your research first. And when it comes to essential oils, something that I used to do with my niece actually, when she would be up at night and we couldn't get her to sleep, a lot of the times when I had her and I would have my essential oils back when she was like a baby baby, like in her crib, I would take a lavender oil and I would place it on her pillow under her pillow pretty much so when she sleeps she gets that lavender thing and it actually calms her down so if she doesn't even go to sleep she's actually calm enough and she's laying there to be on the road to go to sleep so then you can get some rest as well and that's some a little tip that i would do and for internal use when it comes to essential oils because essential oils can be used topically external like you know topically or internal or for aromatherapy there's multiple ways for it to be used when it is to be used internally it will say supplement i don't know if you can see that but it says supplement facts so that's when you know you can use a particular oil internally other if it does not say supplement or if it does not say on the bottle because this also says um for internal use, for aromic, aromic, topical, or internal use. And it gives you the direction. It gives you what it's for. This is tea tree oil. If you're sensitive to anything, you want to know these things that, like I said, essential oils are very powerful. So you want to be careful when using them. And you want to use, if you're going to use it on your skin, you want to use a carrier oil. Carrier oils are pretty much oils used to dilute them. You can do carrier oils, you can do water if you want to like a good thing like facial mist to use. You know, if you want to do like a facial mist, you can actually put it in at least four ounces of water or more and spray it on and do like, you know, a few drops and spray it for 
wherever you want to use it topically. So blood pressure or high blood pressure is lavender and rosemary. We know lavender to be very calming. It helps de-stress the body. It helps the, the pulse rate go down and it helps you relax and it helps with breathing as well. And with rosemary, it creates the mind and it is a power antioxidant, powerful antioxidant. And it also thins hair, you know? So if you wanna use a little bit of rosemary for in your hair, like if you're having hair problems and you need to thicken your hair, use a little bit of rosemary oil. I have rosemary, I think, where is my rosemary? This is the rosemary oil I have first. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Um, this is a tangent, uh, also going on a tangent of different oils because like I said, you wanna make sure it has supplement. Not all oils have this and you wanna research your oils too. Before I got this, I did like heavy research on it. I watched a few videos and I did the same thing with this because this was the first oil that I got and I wanted to like use it for ingestion. It's rosemary or acacia oils. These oils are not, they're single botanical, then there's no synthetics, tested for authenticity, not tested on animals, but where is it? So it's not saying on here, but when I did the research, it said that this brand was actually not uh, recommended for internal use. So I found this brand on Amazon, which is Zongle, and I have been using this and I personally haven't had any problems with using it. I don't use it consistently. I should probably use it a little bit more consistently, but uh, I do use that and I have used that. And when I do use it consistently, like what I do with this tea tree, because it is for purifying and rejuvenating. So if I brush my teeth or anything of that nature, I will actually put, drop, put a few drops of tea tree on my, um, toothpaste dilute it with run it under the water brush my teeth and my gums will be very great i would uh put it in a some water in a spray bottle spray it on my face if i'm drinking a certain type of tea or if i'm drinking some water i'll put a few drops in my water like that and then i'll drink my water it's several different things that you can use with uh do with the tea tree they're great for the things you can put them in a bath to help relax your body as well you can put them in an oil diffuser to uh, inhale the smoke and to have the smoke be uh, cleansing and relaxing you and also open up your pores if you need that like whatever the case you want you're using your oil for it it's very multi-uses of essential oils and that's why i love essential oils so much i'm very big on essential oils i just love them Mary is great for your joints and it can be applied topically as well so and like i said if you don't want to use the oil these are also two great little things, little tidbits of teas you can make. So if you have some lavender uh, on hand, you can make a tea with it. You can make um, this lavender and rosemary, you can make a tea. Make a tea. If you don't have the oil, if you don't want to do the oil, make a tea of it. Uh, so, and something as well, like I said, lavender is de-stressing to the body and it helps promote sleep. Like I said, I put my niece to sleep with the lavender oil. Uh, something that I would do, especially if I uh, couldn't sleep, is smoke it. Smoking lavender puts me straight to sleep. I am not gonna lie. Having trouble with sleeping, smoking your lavender will put you straight to sleep. And it's legal, so it's not weed. Or you can mix it with, you know, if you smoke and you live in a legal state, not promoting the use of cannabis at all, but if you smoke and you live in a legal state, mix you a little lavender in that little blunt of yours and you'll have a fun time. You can mix any herb, honestly, like with the blunt. So infections, oregano and thyme. Oregano is a very, very powerful antioxidant. It is, has a lot of antifungal properties. It is anti-powerful at just treating infections and boosting the immune system. It is very, very great for any type of thing. When I say like essentials, 
I, I might make a video of like essentials that I keep on hand for myself, but oregano is one of them. It has Carvasol. Carvasol, Carvacrol, it's pronounced something like that, which is also found in oregano too, but oregano has higher levels of it in there, so that adds its antifungal properties. Thyme oil is also very powerful for your micro microbiome properties, and it supports a healthy immune system. Your microbiome properties is your gut. That's your gut health. So with any type of disease and any type of ailment you have, especially when it comes to like immune disorders, your gut is what you want to focus on. Mix this with the carrier oil. I would say for a natural vapor rub, right? Get you some oregano, get you some thyme, get you some rosemary and some tea tree and a little lemon. If you don't have all of these things, you can use three of what I just mentioned. Mix you a carrier oil jojoba, grape seed oil, um, if you're allergic to nuts, jojoba, grape seed. You can use grape seed if you're allergic to nuts, uh, or rose hip. Rose hip is a very, very good oil for your skin especially. So you can get you some rose hip oil uh, and use that. Just a lot of different things that you can do and mix it on your chest. Mm, you know, I wouldn't recommend putting it on there, but I would say if you're wearing a t-shirt, you can even put the oil. What I like to do is put the oil on my clothes and inhale it. And it'll like, because it's on my shirt, especially it's so close up to my nose and so close up here that when I'm inhaling it, I'm inhaling, I'm inhaling, I'm inhaling, I'm inhaling, I'm inhaling. I'm inhaling. And whoosh, like, you know what I mean? Like, just everything that's being stuck and just keeping to be closed, it'll just better your breathing and open up your lungs and your chest. And that's what you want. What I just said, but the oregano and thyme, you could add the drops directly to the um, area of infection. So wherever you're infected, add these drops to that particular area and you'll be good. If taking these internally due to the... Um, anti-microbial the properties do not go overboard like and i don't recommend going overboard with any of these if you're taking it internally any oil that you're taking internally i don't i wouldn't say it's needed to take every single day you can want to get yourself with holistic care and with holistic treatment it's something to be vigilant you got to be very very vigilant and very very on it you can't slip you can't miss a day of any type of thing because if you do missing that day only causes it only prolongates the process so but when it comes to oils the essential oils for example they're very powerful they're the direct extraction carrier oils are different because carrier oils are the diluted version of it but essential oils are the direct the direct so when doing so you don't want to go overboard because they are very, very powerful. Um, a maximum of 10 to 14 days at a time. In smaller doses taken with food. Because you want to treat it like the medication you are getting. Diabetes or any type of pre-diabetic metabolic issues, uh, fluctuating syndrome, like not fluctuating syndrome, fluctuating issues. It said diabetes can be corrected with the medication or through diet and essential. And this is information not from me. These are notes that I've learned and things, notes that I've taken from uh, a doctor's lecture. So this is actual doctor recommended things you can do and you can try the thing with that's different with holistic care and medication is the fact that holistic takes time and it takes dedication and it takes patience so you have to be patient when it comes into play um so for things of that nature you want to use cinnamon and holy basil
certain compounds in cinnamon actually mimics insulin. Certain compounds in cinnamon mimics insulin. It also helps with kidney issues, advanced aging, immune problems, and it's great for inhaling and consumption. And a lot of times too, like with oil of oregano, the same thing, if you get oil of oregano, I've seen a video of a lady, she actually is a holistic practitioner and she takes the oregano and places it under her tongue. So, and that is another way you can ingest just one drop, one drop, because oil of oregano is a very powerful for infections, especially I'm backtracking a bit. But it's very, 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 very powerful for infections. Get you some oil of oregano. Oil of oregano. And then holy basil is has an adaptogenic quality. Adaptogens, me knowing the information I know about herbs and stuff like that nature. Adaptogens are, they remove... They relieve stress. So, which I said this and I didn't even read the notes, which it says immune system quality to help reduce stress, boost the body. And you can inhale, you can inhale it, you can use it topically, and you can consume it. So, all the thing about knowing about health issues. Like I said earlier, a lot of health issues are come stem from inflammation, infection, and insulin. Our body needs insulin. And I watched a lecture about fasting from another doctor who, and I will link that down below for you to watch if you need to watch that. Um, it talks about insulin. The body uses insulin. And a lot of times, a lot of diabetics actually are either producing too much insulin or very little insulin. So when it comes to being diabetic, what you have to do is balance that insulin. You need to balance your insulin levels and you need to find ways of how to balance your insulin, level. If insulin levels. How you do that is through food. You do it through food. You can do it through intermittent fasting. If you don't want to do just like a water fast, like a three-day fast of just plain water or plain whatever, you can do intermittent fasting, which is eating, giving yourself a window period, eating with the sun. I talked about this earlier. I'm not going to go too in-depth with eating with the sun or eating throughout the day, but eating uh, meals and heavy meals within an afternoon period, eating your light meal in the morning and eating a light meal before or like a evening, pre-evening slash evening meal that you eat and you don't want to go to bed hungry. Going to bed hungry is very bad. Your body pretty much is still working. You're supposed to be resting. In a slumber state, you're supposed to be resting. So if you are eating before you go to bed, your body isn't resting. And then that's why, one, you maybe you can't go to sleep and you can't sleep through the night. Or two, or you're waking up tired. You're waking up drained. You're still waking up groggy and all of these things. It's because you ate and then went to bed. So, one, regulate. It says to regulate your blood sugar, two drops of essential oil and all food three times a day. So, insomnia. This is a good one. I just, you know, lavender, of course. It's very good for sleeping, promoting sleep and calming as well as chamomile, uh, Roman chamomile, or German chamomile. There's very diff there's different types of species of it all. Very common for the body. Uh, reduces stress. It's very common for the body, for the brain, and the digestive system. And that's what we need. It's good for gas and bloating. I have a, where is it? It's good for gas and bloating and it soothes as the digestive system. That's why it's great for it. It helps that process of like soothing and promoting uh, 
like a nice little process. Um, I like to put essential oils like this when I'm having a very stressful moment. I will take a drop, rub behind my ears with it, and just allow myself to calm down or I'll put it on my shirt, on my body, especially like that. Fatigue is increased cortisol. Um, pretty much adrenal fatigue is when you see those people, you know, which we have a lot, beer belly. Beer belly. Those, we do, you be like, these tired, old, grunt, like, you know, like, oh, he a grouch. You know, we know, like, grandpa being grouchy or, you know, the beer belly, the gut, the, the, the gut, that's adrenal fatigue. I learned that too. I looked, I was like, oh, that's what that's called? I didn't know that was called something. I just thought that was like a gut. No, it's adrenal fatigue and it's a disorder. Our bodies aren't, our gut isn't supposed to be expanded like that. Like even like the kids who they would show the kids in Africa with the big bellies and stuff like that. Adrenal fatigue. Holy basil, which is a powerful adaptogenic to the fatigue. Uh, you can consume it internally one or two drops of oil or rosemary. If you use this or rosemary, due to the anti, okay, due to the anti, rosemary is really good. Due to, we said earlier that rosemary has anti-microbial, micro, why can I say this word, microbial, microbial properties. Microbial properties pretty much are, like I said, it's your gut. It's adrenal fatigue, your gut is going to help with your gut. It's going to help, like, energize that process, get you kind of going, and it's going to help protect you as well. You can, it says, consume internally one or two drops of oil or, ro or rosemary helps with a diet that is rich in nutrients, low in sugar, so low in sugar and low in starches, fermented foods, bone broth slash tea, and consuming powerful adaptogenics. So adaptogenics are the things that's gonna provide calming effects. So adaptogenics like um, ashwagandha, maca, um, other calming slash relaxing slash soothing herbs, right? It's an adaptogen. So, we're going to scroll over. Chronic pain. This is like an icy hot, like a natural icy hot. And you can use a lot of different things to make like a natural icy hot. There's so many oils that are a little spicy but this is the ones that was recommended winter green and black pepper winter green is the ice black pepper is the hot winter uh green has similar compounds found in birch oil and birch oil is high in salicylic, salicylic acid which is found in aspirin we know aspirin what is aspirin pain medication okay there we go. It's a natural pain reliever as well. Natural pain reliever and not recommended for internal use. This or the birch oil. Black pepper is a hot, hot and spicy. So anything of that nature is going to like trigger a response of your body. Uh, soothingness and warmth. We know like if you are in pain, the great thing to do is to take a bath like a hot bath, you know, they like get in a hot bath, relax your body, your muscles are like very tense and all of these things and get in a bath, that's pain. Uh, as well as menthol, menthol is very good. You can also use like ginger, like I said, they have a lot of spicy herbs, ginger, cinnamon, which is spicy. And I do not recommend using cinnamon on your skin. I do wanna say something, when I was about like, I want to say 14 or 15 I was trying to do like an at-home mask with egg whites and a bunch of other stuff and one of the ingredients was cinnamon and I put that on my face 
and it burnt me like it burnt my skin it burnt my skin so if you're going to use these things onto your skin ginger cinnamon clove all of these things can be great you want to use it with a carrier oil we talked about carrier oils earlier use it with a carrier oil make sure you're diluting it well and you don't need a lot of drops and massage yourself or you can make like your own oil and infuse this with that like you know what i mean like get fire oil and infuse it i make concoctions all the time i make at home concoctions if i can all the time to of what i need you know and that's what you do you become we have to become more natural into being our own doctors in a way like yes we have the luxury of a hospital yes we have the luxury of a chiropractor yes we have these certain luxuries but as well as what are we doing in our home to provide safety for our bodies and provide protection and provide health and longevity as well so that's all that i want to promote like yes use your resources you have all of these abundant resources to use use them all because they all do help in some way shape or form so depression depressants i don't feel like anybody should be on antidepressants i don't feel like a depression my personal experience like this is just my personal experience with depression and suffering with being that like overtake of sadness i don't think you need to be on medication and it it causes you to feel like a little bit more um like you know what i mean like zombie like so um you can use yang yang Lang yang yang is y l a n g yang yang and orange now orange is a given uh number one indicated for depression um orange uh that is a given any type of citrusy fruit like lime orange lemon grapefruit anything just naturally it uplifts your mood it sparks creativity it does all of those things that's why like if you're ever sad and when i um take my baths if you've seen like my bath thing i said i use oranges i use limes mainly because that uh, increases the vibration increase increases your vibration which is your overall mood so if you need to raise your vibration you need to do several different things for female hormones or menstrual cramps you can use clary sage or lavender stomach issues that you have ginger and peppermint ginger is very very good for like any type of stomach issues whenever i'm bloated uh, so this was like something that I was like, okay, of course, yeah, like ginger would be up there for any gut health because ginger is very good with having um, those properties. Ginger is very warming, warming, it's relaxing, it's really good for your spleen as well. And um, it supports digestion. Ginger supports digestion. So whenever I eat too much, I'm like, I'm about to chew on some ginger low-key. Like, it's like watermelon. So watermelon really support, melon in general supports digestion. So I'm like, let me get me some watermelon because I ate too much. But the thing with watermelon is it's consisted of water. Ginger is too, but ginger is more of a um, base. Like, it has more of like, it's more of a root. You know what I mean? It's a root. So, um, roots contain a lot of water naturally because that's what the root's job is to soak up water. But because it's a root, it's more dense. That's what I was trying to say. It's more dense. So, and it's very anti-inflammatory. Peppermint goes with the icy hot type of thing where it's like, it has a cooling effect, you know, as we know, like peppermint is like that type of thing like you know when you eat like a york peppermint patty so it has a cooling effect supports the motility of the gastric basically helps with digestion you know what i mean like it's the same it's it's just another way of saying like helps with um digestion and gut health uh chamomile is great for stomach 
cardamom, cumin, and fennel seed also has been shown to help uh, release gas or fennel in general has been shown to help like release a lot of gas so if you're struggling with like gas get you some of those and you can like also like and you don't have to um ingest these things you can do like an um, essential oil blend and like get your face you know like that's the beautiful like I love that like that's so relaxing I may do actually a steam today like a facial steam today because I haven't done uh steam in a long time acne tea tree is antibacterial it's antiviral tea tree is a very strong though tea tree is honestly one of the like strongest essential oils it's very strong and you have to dilute it i put it on myself like sometimes just for like balance and stuff because it helps promote balance as well like emotional balance and i use it as my scent sometimes and everyone be like Oh my god that tea tree is strong that tea tree is strong that tea tree is strong tea tree is very strong and manuk is very strong and it helps with infection i read it earlier it's purifying and rejuvenating cleanser promotes healthy immune function protects against seasonal threats and that's pretty much what acne is acne is an infection and it's also a what is going on inside our bodies it's a reflection of what is going on inside our bodies that's why we have the face maps and mixing them with aloe vera bentonite clay it says do not take internally it's good for oral health i don't understand how it says don't take internally but it's good for oral health as well slash oral acne slash issues use like you know turmeric and frankincense frankincense is very powerful and i did a video talking about the power of frankincense and lime so if you want to go to that video i will have that video linked below for you bronchitis having phlegm that you want to warm up and reduce stagnancy eucalyptus and thyme eucalyptus it's a powerhouse for opening airways. I love eucalyptus. I use eucalyptus a lot, and it's very good for immune health and great for decongestion. One of the most popular ways to use eucalyptus is um, by placing it in your shower, like taking the herb, and I've done this too, and it is amazing. It's very amazing. Eucalyptus is also calming as fuck. It's really calming. Eucalyptus is so calming. So I take the eucalyptus, and I um, attach it to my shower head. And when I take a shower, the steam and the water kind of helps the eucalyptus like steam up and just opens up. And it's like a natural steam you can do in the shower or you can get the oil. And that's how I do a steam as well sometimes. Sometimes I'll do it in my shower where I'll take it and just put it in my shower and let the steam kind of rise. And then as I'm washing, it's like a double whammy, like I'm washing, but I'm also like steaming myself. Time helps get things to start moving to eliminate uh, infection. It has time all that is gentle. It has time all, but it's gentle and it helps, like I said, it's microbiome, very microbiome. So now, and being antiviral and antifungal as well. So, and antiviral. But lemon is also great for decongestion. Lemon slash lime. It um opens up the lymph limps, the lymph nodes, your lymphs, and gets other things moving. Your lime water, like waking up and drinking lime water, and it does work. That's why they say like you should drink water first thing right when you wake up. Don't do anything else. Drink you some water because it really does remove that mucus. Um, and candida, which is yeast. Candida is yeast. So you can use clove and oregano uh, 10 to 14 times out of day. You can take it in. Um, so clove is highly... Good for infection. It's amazing. Amazing. It's good against fungi and fungus. And you can inhale or consume clove as well. So you can use like 
do it 10 to 4 days, uh, one drop of each three times a day with food or an empty stomach. You can do this for candida, one drop a day with food or an empty stomach. Cancer, frankincense, lavender, and myrrh. Frankincense radically, frankincense radically boosts the immune system. Works great, works great for conventional treatments and you can inhale, you can assume it, you can uh, apply it topically. Um, frankincense and myrrh are actually what they use to mummify people. Fun fact. They use frankincense and myrrh to mummify. And I think that, I don't know. And so with knowing that frankincense and myrrh was used to like mummify, mummification was the process to pre preserve the body. So, which means that frankincense and myrrh will help preserve your body. So, doing that with and taking it, it has no choice but to boost your immune system. Um, it helps myrrh programs, programming cell death of cancer cells, oral issues. Myrrh is used in a lot of like natural toothpaste. I think I have a, a toothpaste brand, and one of the things that they use is anise and it's myrrh as well. Myrrh is used great for mouth, and I have some myrrh. Uh, I can show you what myrrh looks like if you want to see. Hold on. So myrrh, I don't have it with me. It uh is great as a mouthwash, and consume it orally in small doses. Turmeric is also really good for uh um cancer as well. It says two are the most powerful. Uh, compounds, tumoral and curcumin, highest level of tumoral compi compound compounds have anti-cancer benefits. Consumed orally, but might stain a bit because you know turmeric is yellow and turmeric will stain. So lavender, lavender is good with de-stressing the body, and like we talked about earlier, when it comes to disease, a lot of disease is stress. A lot of disease is inducing of stress so you want to reduce when you're going through disease the main purpose of holistic care and holistic wellness is the overall wellness of the mind body and soul so it's not just the physical body the thing that how we are treated nowadays with modern medicine is just of the body but we have to implement all of these things in our surroundings as well because it de-stresses us it allows healthy things to come in. It allows a healthy mindset. It allows change to come in as well. So I hope this video was helpful. The information, you can come up with different blends of things that you need for yourself. I do want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. This video is a very much so longer one and I hope it's a little bit more organized for you and I hope you did find some information that was helpful. Like I said, do your research upon these things. These are This is just an introduction for you to them and what they can do for you. This video, if this video was very informative to you, give it a like, give it a share, give it a subscribe, subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna be posting more content and more notes that I have of just different things that I find to be helpful. And have a good day. Thank you.